Hey guys, it's Dave. Thank you for tuning in as always. Today, I'm bringing you another edition of our Rocket Lab updates. It's been a fairly eventful week in the markets. I think Rocket Lab stock has been holding up pretty well, and there's lots to talk about, so let's get right to it. Quickly before that though, if you're new here, I hope you will consider hitting that subscribe button by the end of the video. If you're not already a subscriber, and to the current subscribers, thank you guys so much, and I'll check out your comments down below as well. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into this week's Rocket Lab updates. So on the week, the S&P is down relatively substantially, and I've actually been quite impressed with Rocket Lab's performance over the week, showing some pretty strong sub stability here. Uh, usually you look at Rocket Lab as a high beta type stock, meaning the stock market is up, it's probably up even further. And if the stock market is down, it's probably down even further. But this week, we're pretty much flat on the week, whereas the S&P and the overall markets are down on some of the macro news. We're seeing uh, trade stuff with Trump talking about tariffs on the EU, uh, new tariffs on Apple and all this kind of thing. So uh, pretty good strength here from Rocket Lab in the face of some market headwinds. Pretty pleased about that performance overall. Uh, zooming out a little bit further on a one month basis, still looking quite strong, gone all the way from sub $20 to $25. So very strong run on Rocket Lab stock. I've been quite impressed, I have to be honest with you. Looking at the RSI, we're still looking a little bit oversold on a one year basis. I mean, this isn't like a hard and fast rule, but yeah, it is looking a little bit peaky right now. Although, you know what? It was looking oversold even at about 15 and that didn't stop it from running up. So always take the RSI with a grain of salt. In terms of company-specific news now, Rocket Lab did successfully launch their third mission for IQPS in that multi-launch contract and set the schedule for the next IQPS mission as well. So it won't be too long before they return to the skies for IQPS. This mission was called the Sea God Seas and was successfully launched from New Zealand on May 17th, 2025, carrying a IQPS SAR satellite. This was the third overall launch for IQPS and the second in a multi-launch contract to launch eight missions for the company in 2025 and 26. Four more launches are scheduled for this year with this customer and the remaining two will be in 2026. The next mission for IQPS is scheduled to launch in less than a month's time. So uh, another good sign for that cadence moving forward. Peter also highlighting on Twitter that Rocket Lab's separation systems also have a 100% success rate after more than 20 years of launches. So these help separate the satellite from the vehicle, usually a spring type system pushing it away without any kind of chemical propulsion, obviously a very important piece separating that payload successfully. So just another little highlight in there. And they've also scheduled their next launch in a series of multiple missions for Black Sky, one of Rocket Lab's longest and most reliable customers. So this next mission will be named Full Steam Ahead and will launch from New Zealand as well during a launch window opening on May 28th, so in just about a week's time. And it will launch another one of Black Sky's next gen three satellites to join the company's constellation where they provide um, earth observation for defense and government purposes. Uh, continuing on, now this isn't Rocket Lab specific news, but I did think it was worth a mention. Uh, Starship has been approved to launch for the next text test flight uh, after they did their investigations of what went wrong with that previous flight. Now of note, this will be the first time Starship attempts to use a previously flown booster. So this is really big for the Starship program and advancing spaceflight as a whole, uh, hopefully bringing them one step closer to complete reuse, including the second stage, although that second stage reuse a little bit down the line. Uh, curious to hear, let me know down in the comments. Have you guys been a little disappointed thinking Starship has moved slower than you expected? Is it moving faster than you expected? Are you overall impressed with the program or disappointed? Always like to hear. And, you know, I'm not a SpaceX hater in this 
channel. I do like a lot of the things that they've done. They've certainly pushed the space industry forward and, you know, wish Starship nothing but the best. Uh, I never really wish for anyone to fail, really, when it comes to space, always hoping uh, to, you know, push space forward. And when space wins, Rocket Lab wins. That's how I look at it anyway. Um, Kratos did tweet about Rocket Lab joining their mock TB 2.0 team. You know, not really news here, but nice little image with an electron launch, at least it looks like, talking about hypersonic test launches uh, once a week or more. And I do think we're looking at quite a ramp up, at least right now, when it comes to haste. So that'll be exciting to see with that contract. Perhaps a little bit of a smaller piece of news, but Rocket Lab and the Port Authority have submitted an application to dredge an area around wallops that will allow them to basically deepen the channel and allow large rocket components up to 25 feet wide to be delivered by barge. Uh, currently, there's no permanent reliable way to do that, although I do think they have some workarounds in place perhaps for the first couple rockets uh, you know just bringing it up to the beach and stuff like that from what I understand so just a, another sign of progress going well when it comes to the launch infrastructure side of things Rocket Lab did also release a nice little promo video of the Varda Pioneer spacecraft and their re-entry it looks really cool probably worth a watch just a couple minutes long if you're interested in checking out Rocket Lab's YouTube channel as well, we did have an SEC filing about the changes in the company structure. Now, this isn't news because Rocket Lab disclosed it during the earnings, but yes, they are following through with it, um, basically changing Rocket Lab to a holding company that will have, you know, different uh, subsidiaries inside it, whether that's the US, the New Zealand, uh, Europe, or even Canada with some of the work they do up here. Um, so yeah, nice to see that's going forward and hopefully it will open up new avenues of revenue in terms of, you know, various governments out there and stuff like that. Um, now, interesting news this week on President Trump's Golden Dome. Uh, very confusing and controversial topic, if I'm being honest with you. So um, the headline is that the Golden Dome is now to cost $175 billion, and we know who it's going to be led by, which is this general, and that is pretty exciting. Uh, the Golden Dome is supposed to be fully operational by the end of his term, uh, laying out <laughs> a challenging timeline. That's one way of putting it now. Personally, I don't see how this could be fully operational in about three years, considering it's not even really been funded yet or started or they haven't really decided on any vendors, anyone to build the satellites, what the satellites will look like, how the systems talk to each other, how this interconnects with SDA's constellations. So a very aggressive timeline. I don't know if that will happen personally. Let me know what you think. But there does seem to be a lot of funding coming for the Golden Dome. And Peter Beck did say in the most recent earnings call that they plan to be active in the Golden Dome. So whatever that looks like, we don't know. Uh, details are still very scarce in this overall project. We know some things, but not a lot of specifics. Uh, it even says here in the article uh, that the architecture details were pretty thin and uh, one official told them that it depends on how one describes it in terms of <laughs> the missile defense timeline initiative. So that reminds me of going back to Clinton and like, uh, depends on what your definition of is is like, it's never, you know, uh, <laughs> a good sign for the timelines or whatever they're talking about when they debate something like that. I found that hilarious. But what is clear is that um, this is happening. We did just get an announcement that, oh, and by the way, yeah, some people worry about ethics concerns with Elon Musk, which is importantly, uh, apparently having a, a leading bid for it. Um, but the Trump tax bill did clear the House. And believe me, guys, I don't love talking about politics, but unfortunately, it does touch on space policy and space industry a lot. So you kind of have to. Uh, this bill passed, so it's one step closer to bringing uh, $25 billion of initial funding for the Golden Dome to bear. Still has to go through the Senate and only passed by one vote, so very close on that one. 
But let me know um, how you think Rocket Lab is going to participate in this Golden Dome, obviously with the hypersonics and haste. But I'm more interested right now in the satellites and whether they might get any new satellite uh, constellation contracts or neutron launch contracts or anything like that could be interesting as well. Um, Donald Trump also tweeted that they are going to be... Um, putting up plenty of spectrum for auction so that they, you know, have enough spectrum available for communications and all this. So uh, spectrum, one of the areas Rocket Lab doesn't really have. So it would be interesting to see if something comes available that they could get access to. Uh, again, you know, details scarce on this one, but it does look like some spectrum may be coming up for grabs at some point. And obviously you do need spectrum if you're going to be communicating over radio frequencies, not so for optical with their Moneric acquisition. Uh, another thing to note is that um, there could be some potential for Rocket Lab and AST, but obviously this is about Rocket Lab, to be added to the Russell 1000 index. And those index preliminary rankings are expected to drop after hours today. So you know, could be some more index money comes into Rocket Lab's stock when it gets added to an index. Obviously, some people just buy the whole index and, you know, money managers will need to add it to track the index properly. Um, I don't consider it uh, relative, like massive news or anything like that. Obviously, I like to follow the company and make sure the company itself is doing well as opposed to investing for some kind of um, news like this. But maybe short term, it could provide a bump for the stock. And similarly, Endless Capital here talking about the uh, preliminary index additions and deletions are posted af May 23rd after 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. So depending on when you're watching that, it may already be out. Rocket Lab being added or not to the index um, won't really be too upset either way, to be honest, uh, personally. So yeah, there is that. And then there have been several Peter Beck interviews coming out lately. This one with Core Memory, always interesting, talking a little bit more about high-level industry stuff, talking about his famous dinner with Elon Musk, where they talked about space industry and rockets and all that. A lot of history between those two guys. Another one as well, more high level, not a ton of new stuff here, but this one is on the OPTO YouTube channel as well, talking about their uh, national security contracts and all the rest. And of course, Madison had another one eight days ago, um, talking Rocket Lab as well. She's always worth a watch. That is Markets with Madison. And I had one with uh, the usual gang a couple weeks ago. I imagine if you're watching this channel, you already saw it. But if not, I do recommend going back and giving it a listen. So that's all the news I have for you today. Been a little bit of a lighter news cycle for the past couple weeks following earnings. We got the big flood of news around earnings and then things tend to quiet out, but I'm sure it will pick up sooner rather than later. Let me know what you think about any of these topics. Uh, personally, I am most interested in the Golden Dome. I mean, details are so scarce, but it could be big for Rocket Lab, could be new business in terms of hypersonics, in terms of launch, in terms of, you know, satellites and, and components and all the rest, of course. Even if SpaceX get contracts, sometimes they buy separation thing systems and things like that from Rocket Lab as well. So not out of the question, even if Rocket Lab isn't a big supplier, they get a little bit of business from it. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Personally, I don't think there's a chance that the entire Golden Dome is operational in three years, unless it's just kind of a renaming of the SDA constellation. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. $175 billion is a lot of money, and it looks like $25 billion is getting ready to be released um, by government pretty soon. Hope you guys had a good week. Rocket Lab stock seems like it's been treating us all fairly well, myself included. Let me know of any trades you've been making down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.